Hey everyone, this is Helene from Virtual Veg Fest Live, powered by the Plant Based Network, and we have a cooking demo today. <laughs> so excited with Stephanie Mosley cooking something good out of Nashville, Tennessee. She was actually one of our vendors at our event in October. But first, let's say thank you to Orgain for sponsoring our lives this week, orgain.com, and you can go to virtualvegfest.com and go to our affiliate page, and you will see how to purchase and help out you know, Virtual Veg Fest, Triangle Veg Fest in that sense. And if you go to virtualvegfest.com and you find our Pass the Buck campaign flyer, you can donate to Triangle Veg Fest this month as the nonprofit. And for every dollar that you donate, you'll be entered to win a prize pack from Orgain, which is pretty cool. And then you can go enter our raffle copter, which is on Plant Based Network. Just go to the little drop down. This is raffle copter or go to the Virtual Veg Fest website virtual veg chest Facebook page and you'll see there go my dogs virtual veg chest Facebook page and you'll see like I have it tagged like pinned to the top how to enter and for that you'll win a prize pack potentially from follow your heart hodo foods or crofters organic hey win-win shop virtual to help support our vendors and help them get through you know a pandemic and then cooking we love cooking demos it's really neat We've got a pot pie, a jackfruit pot pie coming up for you on the menu, which, you know, could be what you make for dinner tonight if you happen to have the ingredients. And of course, you can like interchange like jackfruit with something else or not even put something like that and just use vegetables. But Stephanie's pretty cool. She wrote a cookbook called Cooking Something Good. And we're going to talk about that. And she's going to share more about who she is and what she does. And we're going to get going. Let me bring her on. And if you have any questions or comments, remember, put them in the comment and reactions and we'll get to as many or all of them, you know, that we can. Let's do it. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? Hey, how are you? I am good. I'm super excited that we have a cooking demo today. Yes. Yes, um, I will be making the jackfruit um, pie pies. That is a recipe that is featured in my cookbook. Um, if you have not already purchased the cookbook, you can purchase it at cookingsomethinggood.com, C-O-O-K-I-N-G-S-U-M-T-H-N-G-O-O-D.com. <laughs> and inside today, this is what we are going to make. Um, the jackfruit pie pie. Now, what's so special about this recipe is that you can swap out any type of ingredients that you want to. So this re recipe called for um, red skin potatoes and green beans. However, if you don't like that, you can put whatever you want in that recipe. So for today, um, we'll have um, some broccoli, we will have carrots, we will have onions, and then also turnip bottoms and jackfruit, um, what we will put in the uh, <laughs> pot pie. So before I get started, my name is Stephanie. I did create the vegan cookbook um, to ensure that all of anybody that want access to the cookbook or vegan recipes are able to do it. It's not hard, it's not you know super extreme as you may think. And so that's why I'm here to kind of relay that message to you so you can see how it's done. Um, also, before I get started, I do want to thank you so much for joining me. And also, I want to give a special shout out to Valerie. I think it's Valerie, the vegan therapist on um, Instagram. She actually did a recipe out of my cookbook. She posted it. It looked lovely. So special shout out to her and everyone else that have supported me um, through this time um, in buying the cookbook. So let's get started. <laughs> So I'm going to cook the um, filling in the recipe first, um, just so you can see how that's kind of managed. I will be putting in the broccoli, if you can see that. Now, before you do that, I like to cook with grapeseed oil. If you want to um, cook with olive oil, you can do that as well. Um, and so I just put a little bit of that in the skillet. Um, and then I do put all of my, whatever I'm cooking at the time, um, the filling, I do put them all together because ultimately, yes, they will steam and they will um, soften. You don't have to cook them super hard or super long. I would say do this for probably about 
maybe 10 minutes um, until they're soft because they're going to go in the oven anyway. Um, and so here I'm putting in, this was the turn of bottoms. I'm sorry. Am I moving too fast? <laughs> These are the turn of bottoms. I chop those up and put those in there. Um, and they look like potatoes. So the history, backstory on the turn of bottoms. I rather cook with turn of bottoms because um, I don't like a lot of starchy vegetables all the time. So for the most part, I will probably choose the turnip bottoms first. And then, uh, you know, in, in regards to, you know, any other alternatives as far as um, like the filling and everything else when it comes to my Popeyes. So what I'm going to season this with is onion powder. Now, if you do have a cookbook, um, I gave a big disclaimer about my seasonings. All of them are organic. Um, I'm very big on that non-GMO um, type of ingredients and also with my vegetables as well, all organic, non-GMO. Um, and so the next is I'm going to sprinkle a little black pepper in on it. And then I am going to, <laughs> that would help, then I'm going to sprinkle some thyme. I call it thyme. I know what it's called, but I like to say thyme. And I am going to put just a little oregano in it. So I usually call that oregano, but since everybody is on the call, I'll switch that one up so you can actually know what I'm talking about. So yes, that's that I'll put that in there. And some cayenne pepper. I am kind of a spicy head, so you don't have to put that much in there if you don't want to. But um, yes, and then just a little smoked paprika. Now, what I'm going to do with this is let this steam by adding just a little water. So when I say a little, um, I don't even think it's to a point where I have to measure. Just kind of sprinkle it around there. You don't want to pour a lot of you know water in there, but just wet and get them moist, wet in the bottom. And cover it. So I'm going to let that sit for a second because that will be steaming and probably it doesn't take long. My stove is kind of cool when it comes to that. Um, that'll start steaming probably about two or three minutes. Um, but what I am going to jump to is the jackfruit. So with the jackfruit, I marinated the jackfruit with um, – vegetable broth and you can get either one this is the one that i sometimes get from trader joe's and then this one this is everywhere you can get this at kroger's turnip truck whole foods wherever you want to get it <laughs> they should have it and um i also marinated in the not chicken um bouillon cubes sometimes if i just want you know that type of flavor i sometimes use that but not all However, um, I let this sit probably, this has been soaking probably for about, what, three hours now. Um, so it could be longer. The longer, the better, of course, it holds in the flavor. Um, and this will come out just giving you like that extra type of um, chickeny uh, flavor once you put everything together. So I'm going to oil my skillet. And, and I'm just going to start putting the jackfruit in here. So if you ever work with jackfruit, you know there's little pits and seeds in the middle of it. If you haven't, I'm telling you now, there's pits and seeds in the middle of the jackfruit. And you would want to remove those um, before you cook them. I made a mistake when I first started <laughs> cooking and eating jackfruit. I didn't remove the seeds, and actually, it didn't go well. My body didn't like it at all. My stomach was hurting. I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't eat jackfruit. But it wasn't that. It was just because of the pits that's in the middle of the little seeds, and they're not hard. <laughs> so it's easy to cook with them. So um, if, you, if you're as sensitive as me, you probably want to remove those before you get to cooking in them. Um, so what happens with that? Hold on. I'm sorry. Just stay focused on that because I got to raise my hand. I'm coming. <laughs> okay. So next, I am going to season um, the jackfruit, even though it was marinating. I just like the extra seasoning on it. And of course, I have the Himalayan salt that I'm going to sprinkle a little bit on there. 
um, onion powder. Also, if you do have my cookbook, you know, I'm really big on onion powder. Even though they're, you know, I season both of those with the onion powder and everything, it's going to come out as a different flavor. Don't know why that is. It's just, it just works that way. So, um, yes, and then that was black pepper. And this is some more onion. And pretty much season it now with the jackfruit right now. I'm going to put a little celery seed on it um, because, in my opinion, that gives it an extra kind of chickeny flavor. And we're going to let this start cooking. It may take a few minutes, but we'll let this start cooking. You see the big chunks like right here. Once it starts cooking, it'll um, flatten out. It'll go down a little more. Um, and you can just kind of, I'll show you. I use the fork most of the time and it just spreads out a little bit. It does look like chicken. It's not chicken, I promise. And so, next, y'all with me? Everybody good? <laughs> I'm gonna check in. I'm gonna stop for a second. How are we looking? <laughs> no, it's looking. It's looking great. I think you know. I like the fact that your pans are like ceramic and and not Teflon. So, right. Yep. And that you use organic, which I'm a fan of as well. So, Absolutely. Where did you buy your jackfruit? That tends to be a typical question when it comes to jackfruit. So, um, yes, <laughs> you can buy the ones that you can season and do all that. Those are the ripe jackfruits, and most of the time they are in the can. Um, that's probably the only time you'll catch me using something out of the can in that way. Um, and you can get it from Turnip Truck. If you're in Nashville, you can get it from Turnip Truck and get it from Whole Foods. Um, and hold on, let me see. Don't look in my, don't look in my cabinet. Let me see. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is what is what nature native forest. Um, this is the one that we use. Um, it says young jackfruit, water, sea salt, and organic lime juice, and that's you know all that's in it. Of course, it's gluten free. Um, and yeah, they it's been they they've been pretty cool so far. I don't notice anything crazy with them. Um, for as long as I've used them, so. I would say it's cool. If you have, like, if you're in another area and you see a, you know, different type of can of jackfruit, just make sure it's organic, non-GMO, that type of thing. And it don't have a lot of ingredients. It should have that basic ingredients, water, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. It shouldn't have any other crazy things in it um, for it to be, you know, jackfruit. But yeah, it comes comes like that. And um, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's been working so far. Now, so. that can has those seeds that you were talking about in it? Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, no one's it, ever brought that up before, so I'm I'm I and it's like it's a, a surprising thing. Like it's never been said and other people have cooked with jackfruit. So I mean, I who knew? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm I'm like super particular when it comes to eating anyway. Um, so I notice everything. I notice every, you know, type of thing that's not supposed to be there and what is supposed to be there. So I immediately caught on to, yeah, something's not right with this. I can't eat the pits. I can't do that. Um, but if you're getting a ripe jackfruit, um, I actually did that one time. One time. That's the only time I will ever do it because it was so much work. I bought the big jackfruit from um i think it, where did i get that that time i want to say it was whole foods or kroger it's somewhere that had the really big jack the ripe one not the unripe the ripe one. and so um that one's more sweet and it's yellow and the smell is it, i mean it's strong it's very strong i think that smell stayed in the house about two weeks it's like super strong but it's also super sweet and so um I worked on that in each pod. Like you had to get each <laughs> jackfruit out the pod and remove the seeds and do like so much other stuff. It's very sticky. Whoever wants to do it, more power to you. That's just not my thing. Um, but with that one, I noticed that you can't flavor it because that smell and that taste is really, really strong. So you wouldn't be able to flavor it how you want to. It's just going to be sweet. Um, with, no matter what you know, you kind of do. But if your recipe calls for it to be sweet, then I think it's so yeah it definitely sounds like something that is some things you just are easier to buy in a can or just easier, <laughs> or easier to buy where somebody else did it for you i think of brussels sprouts Absolutely. when i think of like something that's easier to buy like loose and and already picked off the the stick 
that Brussels sprouts come up. It's like, oh, this looks like so much fun until you actually start to prep Brussels sprouts of like the big stick with it that come on. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, it's one of those things. I'd rather just do it like this when I'm in the mood for jackfruit. Um, you can also fry it, but that's another recipe and that's another time. But you can also fry it, and it's so good. It's, it's amazing. I make my chicken nuggets that way. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> so I'm gonna um pan to the the pot right now. <laughs> pan to the pot. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um. So it, if you can see, it's steaming. Everything's steaming. It's getting. You know, kind of to the level I wanted. Um, yeah, I don't cook them fully, fully. I just want to make sure they're soft before I do put them in the pot pie. Um, actually, I might add just a little more water to it, just a, a little pinch, just to get it a little more steamy. And so, and I have the stove on medium, so I don't know if that helps. I, I normally cook everything on me. So let's see if the jackfruit is getting a little soft. It is getting softer. And so when I what I meant by when it breaks up, like you would be able to do this to it when it breaks up. Just kind of flatten it out. These pieces be a little some people cut these pieces. I don't know if you can see it, but some people cut these pieces off. I keep them. I like to eat them. Um, they're just a little thicker than the other portion. So, yeah. And they're they're getting there. We just gonna let them cook just a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. So my next venture is the flower. So the flour to the pot pie is probably going to be the biggest, biggest thing you will have to do. So um, I'm going to start with the putting the. Um, this is going to be two and one uh, third, yeah, two and one third cups of flour. Um, and so this makes for probably I want to say maybe nine. Eight or nine pot pies. I like to cook mini pot pies. So if you like mini pot pies, you can get these off Amazon. They're probably, I don't know, maybe eight dollars or something like that. If that. Um, they're convenient, they're cool, quick. Um, so if you're cooking a larger pot pie, of course it may be like three, you can do it in that. But yeah, with the mini pot pies, we cook about eight or nine. And so going to put that flour. In here. And then next, you are going to do one teaspoon of baking powder. I'm proud of myself because I had that prepared already. And you next, you are going to want to melt the um, vegan butter. Um, and you want to melt one fourth cup of uh, vegan butter. And so um, once you do that, you will put one or actually two third cups of the warm water and you will mix both of those together. So melt the butter first, and then add the two thirds of cups of water to that. And this is what you'll get. This is the, the mixture for that. And then, in a well, just go ahead and that in here. So I'm just going to do this. Why do you mix it with water? So that's just <laughs> that's how I like I don't really want to put milk, like the vegan milk in there. I think if you want to you can. Okay. Um, I just prefer the water because I already have the butter. So I think if you want to put the milk it, I think it'll make it just fluffy. That's all. Okay. No, that's cool. I mean, that's also something I haven't seen is, well, one, there's putting the liquid in, but there's, you mix the butter and the liquid together, which I have not seen. So that's different. Yeah. And what you're doing right now is probably one of my least favorite things to do in the world. <laughs> yes, it's, it sucks, but. <laughs> I put gloves on, We're going to get it. We're going to get it in there. 
It's it's funny. Luckily, I used to love the the play doh back in the day, so I just go to that place when I'm doing it. And so, yeah, this is called kneading. <laughs> I guess I think that's how they say. It. This is the kneading, and I usually do this probably about <clears throat> three minutes. Some would say you probably need to do it for ten. But I would just probably keep doing that for three minutes. However, we're not going to keep doing this for three minutes right now um, because I did this ahead of time and I'm going to show you what it looks like now. So but this is the steps to it. This would all this is all you would need to do when it comes to that. If you have, <laughs> I'm telling you all all my business, my backstories. If you have plastic wrap, which I don't, I ran out and I didn't realize I didn't have any more. If you have plastic wrap, you put that over here. You put it over the um, dough and you set this in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. It can be a refrigerator or freezer. Um, so while that is happening, um, <laughs> let me check. Let me check this. All right, so it looks like our vegetables is pretty cool. I'm gonna take this off the eye because I can't do anything with my right hand right now. <laughs> and then just one moment. One <laughs> yeah, you need to wash your hands. So it's like the worst feeling to me is to have all that on my fingers. <laughs> You can see all that here. Yeah. Just yeah, just focus, focus on the dough right now. Which which is why I wear gloves when I do that. Whenever I mix any type of dough, I don't like I don't like the it getting into my fingernails. I don't I'm not tactile. So yeah, you can easily wear gloves and avoid and just like get it off the gloves and put it into your dough. So and there's the veggies that have been steamed with a tiny bit of oil, mostly water. Yep. And if you have a steamer, that's even better, of course. Um, I don't, so I just usually just do it like that. But whichever works for you, I am going to take it back to the jacket because it looks like we're pretty good. Not that one. It looks a little thick. But it looks like we're getting there. Um, I would say to take the jackfruit for maybe about 10 15 minutes, if that. But not, you know, yeah. This part about everything is it's not meat, so <laughs> there's no thing of oh, you cook it all the way through, you're gonna have this. this, this. Um, so I'm gonna put the preheat the oven to 375 <clears throat> for the top pie. This recipe do calls for a lot of multitasking if you can't fail already. All right, now, this is kind of the fun stuff. This is the dough that I made previously, and it's all cool and chilled and everything. And so what we're gonna do now is roll this up. So what you wanna do is have a, what is that, a board? Um, and I'm getting flour. You would, I'm gonna flour your, your board. Now, I will say if you are gluten free or anything like that, right now I'm using Jovial. This is like a, um, I think this is fairly, they just started kind of putting this out here. I like it because it makes like the fluffy stuff when it comes to bacon. Um, it's the Jovial Organic Acorn Purpose Flour, All Purpose Flour. Um, if you are gluten free, I also have this, and I will be making my gravy with this. This is the amaranth flour. Um, that's gluten free, of course. Um, and I, I don't know how strong your gluten allergy may be. If you're able to, to stand the um, spelt flour, that's a good uh, alternative as well. But when it comes to bacon, amaranth, um, it's pretty cool. You would probably mix it. You would need to mix it more with like quinoa flour or something because it would need like a, a base to it. Um, but amaranth is good. It makes for good, good little backings. So... I am going to place the dough on here. I probably put a whole bunch of flour on there, but I think <laughs> it's like has a lot of flour. <laughs> but it shouldn't stick. I was I was talking. See what happens when you're talking. Let me hold on, let's put this up. All right. There. 
<laughs> you notice how much I scooped up. Okay. So when you start with the pen, this is actually fun. This is actually fun because normally I talk to myself in the kitchen while I'm cooking. And now I get to talk to everybody, whoever is listening. This is fun for me. All right. So I'm just going to roll it out. Now, I don't feel like there's no rhyme or reason to this. It may be, but I don't follow that. This is just how I'm rolling it out. Um, and once I do that, this little guy right here, you can also get this off Amazon or anywhere for like a dollar maybe or two. Um, this is like a cookie cutter, but it's a five inch and I like it. So I use that and I just do that. And I do that two little squares. This is going to be the base of your um, a pie. We got a mess. Now, hold on one second because I need to do the gravy. Got that part. All right. Let's go ahead and do the gravy that will be going on in the pot pie. My kitchen's a mess right now. Um, so, and now I am putting the vegetables, I'm making vegetables with the um, jackfruit right now just to get them out of the way. If you're super particular about how you combine things, you, you can clean this out, like wash it out and start the gravy. I like all the flavors in there still. So I'm going to keep the gravy, I mean, keep the skillet the way it is um, and add just a little olive oil. That was olive oil. So if I had to say, I would maybe say it's two teaspoons or something of olive oil. Maybe. If that's accurate. I put a little onion in there just to get it going. This is going to um, start kind of cooking. So we can pan back to this over here. Now, these are the pieces. Okay, I'll do it the right way. These are the pieces that you'll use for the, oh, darn. Yeah. One these are the pieces that you're going to use for the, um, the pot pie. the bottom and again there's no super rhyme or reason you need to follow just make sure that you oh, that ain't gonna work hold on just make sure that you have the um the base pretty pretty cool hold on what is going on flower the sorry uh, flower the wheel in addition to the board yeah is that what you were trying to tell me yeah. Forgot that step. Flour the wheel. In addition to <laughs> you have enough flour. <laughs> Make sure you have enough flour. As you can tell, I'm not the baker, but I get it done. And it still did. Why are y'all acting like this today? Because I'm live. Uh, uh, uh. All right, we gonna get it. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right, so this is the concept. And I wonder why it's doing that. Do you know what? Hold on. I'm coming. I'm doing this again. This is the joy of being live. <laughs> Are we good on time? How's our time? You're, you're doing great. Okay. Cool. All right, I'm just gonna do it like this because I feel like it wasn't thick enough. We're starting over and we're doing that. Boom. Check my onions and make sure my onions. Good. 
here. You saw that? <laughs> So, when you get it to where you want to get it, it's acting a little bougie today. Um, ultimately, you would have this all filled up. And this is just the bottom. This is how I do it. This is the um, bottom. And you will cover it with the top crust that we'll do in just a few minutes. Do you pre-bake or you just let it cook all together? I let it cook all together. Yep, I'm a fan of that too. But you can par-bake the crust uh, to prevent yeah. possibly it being soft. But <laughs> it, I yeah. think you know, it all works out. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, because that's a lot of baking for my, my taste. So I think me doing it that way is like the, the best for myself. So let's hand to the gravy. So um, I am making the gravy with the amaranth flour just because I like the way it tastes. I love this. It's a really light flour. Um, and so... This is going to look weird, but trust me on this. Um, if I had to measure this, I forgot this. If I had to measure this, I'd probably do maybe a one-third cup. Right now, I'm about to sprinkle it in here. No, yeah, probably about two things. And then I'm going to add about <laughs> one third of a uh, one third of warm water, and you probably will want more. I'm just trying to get the basis here to see what it'll do. Yeah. Now you can put when it comes to your gravy, you can add vegetable broth too if you want. Or you can, or you can do um, just warm water. But right now I'm doing warm water. And that's just how I want it. So, but either way, vegetable broth will give it more flavor, of course. One second, and it looks gooey. However, it will change. It will get a little thicker as you cook it. I guess the flour, have, the flour is a thickener, so like you're making. So you yeah. yeah, I I just kind of break them down, and again, it's gonna get thicker. Um, but you did having it soupy first <laughs> is a good sign, and then it uh kind of roll on out and get a little creamier and all that stuff. <laughs> Now, I just keep stirring it until it gets that way. And the stove does not have to be on a high temperature for this. Actually, you kind of want a gravy to simmer. So I do kind of cook it on low, medium when this is happening. And so you want to work with this probably get two minutes just or until you see it breaking down. You may want, if you want, you can add more water. Um, just depend on your gravy level or how you want it in your pot pie. Sometimes pot pies don't have that much gravy in it, and it's just got to be the vegetables. Um, but I like gravy. I'm big on gravy. Now, what we haven't done is seasoned our gravy. So I do add just a little salt. 
Ooh, I don't want my gravy to taste like today. I do like the. Hmm. Onion powder. Yep. <laughs> yep. Onion powder. You got to have the onion powder. I feel like you can never have too much onion powder. Um, have a black pepper. It definitely looks like a black pepper thing. Um, I have black pepper in my other um, things. And it's, it's going to combine all together. I'm putting some more water. Nicole just said, Nicole, Nicole just said that it looks delish. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Oh, that's my sister, I think. Hi, sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay. So, and I, I like celery seed. I, I, it's just, it just, I don't know, tops off dishes sometimes. And again, give it that little, that little feel. I am going to put some more thyme in it. I feel like that gives it its warmth. And also, um, I know, well, I don't know. I don't know how people feel about nutritional yeast. Some people like it, some people don't. But I want, if I'm cooking with things that's extra creamy or need to be extra creamy, I do put just a little bit. I sprinkle a little in there. It's just a, a good base to me. And so. Nicole says hi. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just gotta add this a little more stuff. And what am I missing here? That's <laughs> it. I'm peeking in my cabinet. Yep, that's it. All right, so. And back to the other part. We haven't forgot you over here. And Linda just said, I never think of adding celery seed to gravy. What a great idea. Yes, I love it. I feel like it just, it finishes it. It tops it off. Just has that. But also, I love celery seed when it comes to certain dishes. It just brings it out more. So I came back here to do the the top. Yep. <laughs> now, so like our gravy has done its thing, I am going to add the vegetables and the jackfruit. Oh, I lost the carrot and the gravy together. And so you will see that it's going to be a little creamy. Now, again, depending on how you want your pot pies, if you want it even creamier, just add more water or vegetable broth. One second. So that just kind of gives it a creamier. Feel. Um, you can see that. I don't know how this looks on you all's end, but <laughs> so we have the turnip bottoms, the broccoli, and the carrots, and the jackfruit. And we are going to take it to the the pot pie and stuff it. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have mine stuff on top. So that's what that does there. And let's get that out the way. And then I cover it like so. And then that big old broccoli sticking out of <laughs> If you want it to be like super pretty, you can chop your broccoli up a little, a little smaller, or any of your dishes just a little smaller. But, uh, 
Oh, I'm just getting the rest of the dough off the edges. I am highly aware it's like a better way to do this, but I'm, I'm not really big when it comes to that. It don't have to be fancy. I just get it done. Well, you're, so, you're, you're cooking something good. <laughs> you're cooking something good and fancy. <laughs> right, there good. you go. It's a difference. <laughs> Long as it's good, I think we're we're on to something. So after that, you just put it in the oven. I'm gonna put my little you can brush some butter on top of it. I don't think I have any prepared to brush do I? Oh, the thing is sticking up. Okay. Um so if you want you can brush some butter on top of it. Um I think it'd be fine. And then let me put some a uh, little X in the middle so it can breathe. Although that little bottom is sticking out, I think it's got enough room. And then I put it in. No, you can't. You can't see my oven because I ain't cleaned it yet. But <laughs> I did put it in the oven for a good. Let's see. I'm gonna check it at 20 minutes. Um, but if you want, you can have it in there for 30 minutes, or you know longer if that's what you want. I think by 20 minutes is pretty cool. I'm going to turn the light on. So, that's it. <laughs> but, um, I'm definitely, if you all want to stick around and see what it comes out like, I was trying to do this ahead of time. It just didn't work out. I tried to prep for a, a pot pie to be ready already. So I could be like, ah, here's the finished touch. And it just, I didn't get it done in time. So that's why we're sitting here right now. Um, but, do anyone have questions or maybe I can take use this time to kind of take the the questions and have a conversation. Yeah, does anyone yeah. have any questions? I like the fact that you made the the gravy part gluten free so that people can understand. Now if somebody wanted to make that dough, because I know I know your dough is actually more like a, a biscuit dough. Yes. It is like a pastry dough. So you can just switch out the flour. Right, right. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and again, I have to always give this disclaimer. I'm working on the baking portion of my craft, okay? Um, and so this is probably the closest that I've ever came to baking something that actually works. <laughs> so um, I like to stick to this because I, I get it at different levels to the, you know, the bacon. You got the bread, the, the pie, the, you know, all the other type of doughs. This one works for me. So <laughs> um, gluten-free wise, um, I haven't tried it outside of this dough, but I do think and believe that it will be fairly, you know, the same. Um, anytime that you're dealing with gluten-free things, though, you do have to make sure you have more than one thing that's binding it. So like I said, with the amaranth, you do want to probably have like a quinoa flour with it, too. Um, cause just straight amaranth is so soft that, you know, you, you are going to have, have extra things to bind it. And, um, for me, because I do, uh, I self-diagnose just common sense when I was eating gluten and wheat and all that type of stuff. Um, you know, I would break out eczema and things like that. So I was very mindful of cutting all of that out. However, I do realize that spelt flour does not affect me at all. And I know that's not for everybody, but um, spelt flour does not, you know, do anything for me. So, or to me. So, um, I would say try it out. And if you're good with the spelt flour, spelt flour is super excellent when it comes to a binder. And maybe not use as much spelt flour. Use the am more amaranth than the spelt flour, so it'll kind of level itself out, and you'd be good. I think that'd be a good alternative. Yeah, one of the things because I'm gluten free, I'm gluten free and vegan, and I use I use Bob's one to one flour. And you can use it as a one-to-one -to, -one to any type of, of glutinous recipe. So it makes uh -huh. it even easier. It's not organic, but it is great for making things simple when it comes to baking. You don't really have to think all that much. And it, yeah, has, cool. it has the combination of flours. And you could easily do this recipe with it and have it come out the same as what you're doing. So that's really Perfect. Cool. Yeah, and yeah. Nicole said, yay, definitely trying this one. And also, how long does it need to cook for and temperature? So the temperature, I set it on 375. And I'm going to cook it for 20 minutes. And I'm going to check it at 20 minutes. If it's done, I'm taking it out. If it's not, I'm going to cook it for 30. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. Well, that's cool. We're, I don't, we're not going to have time to actually see the finished product. 
because that'll push us like way over. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you go to my Instagram, because I, again, I cooked this for um, Thanksgiving, but I've also showed you the pictures as well um, from the uh, cookbook. It is probably, I think, the third post on my Instagram post. That's the finished product of what that would look like. Um, and so same steps, same everything. Well, maybe not the ingredients. I switched that up. But um, that's the finished product of what goes into that recipe. I would love for you to take a picture when it's done and post it in the comments of the live. And, Absolutely. And we can, have sure it, we can have it there for people to see because that would be great. And also maybe a picture of you eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, you know, I think I'm going to have my fiance eat it. I'm going to have him, you know, he's always the taste tester. So I'm going to have a picture of him eating it. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's that that would be absolutely wonderful. <laughs> I always get hungry watching these and always inspires sometimes what I'm going to make for dinner. I had like I know what I'm going to make, but I'm, I watched a, another cooking demo earlier with like a 12 year old who made applesauce, you know, so I was like, I was like I'm going to make an applesauce. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh, yeah, it was awesome. It's cook. Um, it's it's oh my gosh. I can't remember the name of it right now. That's so bad. Cooking with, um, oh, I have something cooking. You know, I have the, I have your name like in my head right now. And I, I can't, <laughs> <That's good>, <laughs> I was like, I can't even think about like what I watched, but it's actually on the plant-based network as well. <laughs> it's so it's, it's pretty, it was pretty cool. So I mean, but I mean, thank you so much for making your kitchen really dirty. And <laughs> right, I, I'm looking at this like, who's gonna clean this up? I gotta clean this up. It's not me, <laughs> <laughs> which makes me really happy. So, <laughs> but I, this was this was pretty easy, yeah. really easy to make. I like I like how you, I'm I I season the same way. I don't follow I don't follow recipes in the sense for seasoning. It's to your taste, but if you are one of those people, the cookbook has exactly what you do, I'm sure, in it. And yeah. you want to be exact, but I always say season to your taste, taste and 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 add things that you like. And if there's things in a recipe you don't like, don't add them. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's the biggest advice I could ever give you. Because I know my taste book calls for onion powder and thyme every time. So if that's something you don't like, just, you know, swap it out. It'll still be good. That's why I structured, like, the recipes that way. So, yeah, you can swap out whatever you want to swap out um, to your liking. Exactly. And that's important because I know some people have to follow a recipe to the T. Like I have to do everything exactly. Whenever I follow a recipe to the T, it never comes out either looking like the picture <laughs> no, or right. tasting good. <laughs> exactly. And with vegetables, it makes it more, like it makes it so much easier because you can do so many things with vegetables. Like it, you can't. I mean, you don't have to follow some direct recipe for vegetables. I mean, along the lines, like the basis, yes. But everything else, you can swap it out. It'll be fine. It would be great, actually. No, I so, agree a hundred percent. Right, like I like we already discussed before we went live. I hate mushrooms, and most people watching this know <laughs> that I absolutely hate mushrooms. But you know, easily, it's an it's an easy thing to like take out of a recipe, and and don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid to try because exactly. even if you follow it correctly, it still might not be. <laughs> it still might not come out well. <laughs> so exactly. just, I mean, just Do have fun. Oh. Do exa that's the main thing is to have fun with it because at the end of the day, you're the one that's gonna be stuck with eating it. So just have fun with it and put it in there the way you want to put it in there. So yeah, I, I I love it. I love creating things like this. Again, my time is like this, so I can't spend a lot of time on recipes, and that's why I made the book that way so that you know this call. Well, how, how, you know, forty five minutes, forty right, minutes. minutes exactly. um, yep. Yeah. So it's not like a, a a whole lot that goes in it, but you have food at the end of <laughs> at the end of the day. You have something to eat, and something good to eat. Um, and it that it didn't take three hours. It didn't take five hours. It didn't take a lot of work. Um, I will say I don't think I I did this. This is always my disclaimer. Make sure you soak soak your vegetables, clean your vegetables, and everything before you eat them. Um, that with the broccoli was soaking, everything was rinsed. Um, even the turnip bottoms was rinsed. I forgot to show you the turnip bottom, but if you don't know what the turnip bottom I'm talking about that I made, it is the root, the root of the turnip green. So I cut these up and yeah, I even soaked this stuff. 
even though it's just the time. Of, but yeah, I clean all the vegetables. Um, and I would just, you know, just make sure everybody is doing that before you do cook them. Um, what you, broccoli. What do, you, what do you soak them in? Sorry. Uh, apple cider vinegar. Um, I put them in, in water. And so I put, you know, I have a little tin. I'll show you this. Hold on. Okay. Um, I have like this big tin and you can, it's like a cake mixer, actually. I just turned it into my soaking bowl. But it's like this. I have another one over there. Um, and I, you know, fill it up with water and soak the vegetables, put the, like a cap full of apple cider vinegar in it. And I soak my vegetables probably like 15, 20 minutes. Normally what I do just to make sure I'm in multitasking mode, um, when I come in from work or something, I immediately, after I wash my hands and all that stuff, I immediately put um, my vegetables and everything in the water and soak them. And then I go take my shower and then I do that because by the time I come back to cook, they're ready and, you know, they're, they're clean. So I would suggest, you know, doing that. Oh, that's great. Do you have a biscuit recipe in the book? No, this is the biscuit recipe. <laughs> exactly. That's why That's why I brought it up. So that someone knows that this dough, like what you have left over on there, you can actually do those circles, put them on, yeah. a, put them on a pan, put them on a flat yeah. pan, and put them in the oven with a little dimple in it, and you'll have a biscuit in about 20 minutes. Yeah. Probably, that's like, probably like 12 minutes, actually. <laughs> exactly. Oh, we're almost actually. I think we should just stay because there's only nine minutes left, and the pot pie is almost. <laughs> the pot pie is almost done. It is no, I know. Okay. okay. All we're, right. We're, I, I'm we're, we're okay. That's why. That's why I brought that up. So in the book, let's talk about the book for a few minutes. You brought okay. up before we went live that there's an alkaline section. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I do have um, 16 alkaline recipes um, in the book. And so that focuses, that focuses on um, a more cleaner, cleaner way of eating. Um, if you are familiar with the alkaline diet, you know that jackfruit is an alkaline. You know, certain things aren't alkaline. It's a more of a um, healing process of eating. Um, it's eliminating any type of foods that's causing inflammation or any type of foods that you know, just wouldn't really work in, in your body and creating that alkaline space. Um, it is to balance out your pH. Um, just it, it's a healing thing altogether. I would advise anybody to kind of research the alkaline um, way of eating. I don't necessarily always like to say diet, but um, that, that lifestyle of eating. Um, and so that portion of the book does focus on oyster mushrooms. I know that's your favorite. Um, and I have like spaghetti squash bowls. I have, um, gee, it's a pasta in there. It's spilt pasta. Spilt is alkaline, by the way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a numerous amount of, um, you know, recipes that you can kind of, and smoothies too, that you can kind of quick still eat and be in the lines if you are on that um, lifestyle right now. Um, more ideas to kind of get you going and you're still eating good types of foods and it tastes really good. Um, I have a grilled version of the oyster mushrooms in there and of course the fried um, and those are like my chicken tenders, the, the portobello mushrooms. Um, but yeah, I'm just using foods that still along the alkaline um, guidelines and I'm, I'm making great things with them. Um, I did get that portion of the book is inspired by Dr. CB. Um, I call him CB. I'm aware it's steady, but I call him CB. Um, and again, if you want to know more about that, uh, just do a quick research and see what, you know, if that's something that you would like to do uh, for one and how that pertains to your overall health. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of that portion of the book. It was fun making those two, uh, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> All right, no, we're good on this end. There was some noise that I needed to get muted. <laughs> so oh. I was like, that's why I muted myself for a few minutes. So I was like, all right, but we're okay. <laughs> now I've, okay. Heard, I've heard all about alkaline. So I think that's, you know, that's also unique to your book that you have all those recipes, have all those recipes in there. And yeah. is there is there anything else in the book that you want to share? You know what, let me see, because it's right here. Um, 
Let's see here. Do I have anything else I want to share? Um, I mean, just overall, uh, I got a lot of questions um, at the Veg Fest about the Fanyo. Um, I was shocked to see that Whole Foods um, sell Fanyo. Um, it'll be like in the, what is that? In the, it, I think it's like in the pasta and grain sec, like aisle, but it's not over there with the pasta. But um, Fanyo is such a great alternative to grits and um, like uh, oatmeal or anything like that. Um, yeah. It, what is, what is, what is that? It's an ancient brain. Um, okay. It is, again, it's the alternative to like the grits and everything, but it's, it is way more beneficial. Um, it does have all your, your minerals that you are seeking, your, your iron, zinc, you know, those type of things that you're getting. Um, I didn't picture it in here because Fanyo is kind of its own little entity. Let me see if I, let me go on my cabinet again. Don't look. Um, I thought I had some in and just so everyone knows, like that that cookbook is is a big cookbook. It is it is solid. It is large. It is really nice because I saw it at the Nashville Veg Fest when she had a table at. So she talked with people. She even donated a book for us to give away. And we, we didn't really look in the cabinet. You're okay. And here we get to see what fun it is. Okay. <laughs> So this is the Fanyo that is at, you can get it at Whole Foods, actually. Um, and I tried it, and it was really good. Um, I had a different brand, and I like that brand, too. Um, and this one was similar to it, and I, I like the taste of it. It doesn't take a lot to cook this. This this cooks quicker than your grits and the oatmeal. Um, and it's just, I don't know. It's just overall, it's really, really, really good. It is a grain from South Africa. Um, an ancient grain again, and nobody didn't get dough on my face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and again, it cooks really, really quick. So, is it I would try. Free? It is gluten free. It is it, gluten free. So it's just it's so pure that it doesn't have any of that. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely cool. You can actually make it as a breakfast type of thing, or you can make it in a dinner. Um, type of way. So I've combined it in the cookbook with uh, okra. And then on the breakfast end, I put, you know, fruits and cinnamon or something like that in it, um, but not an alkaline part. Cinnamon is an alkaline. But in that portion of the breakfast, I do have fruits with it and, you know, things like that. So either way, it tastes really good. Yeah, that's it. That's it's very interesting to me because I. It, it said on the package that it's like couscous, which is which is wheat. So I I can't I can't eat wheat. So I'm actually very curious about that. I think it's more of the texture they're saying. Like, what's it called? Because I said couscous. What is it? Couscous. You got couscous. it. Couscous. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I t I'm telling you, I make my own names up for everything. But um, yeah, it's it's like probably that. Texture and probably remind you of that maybe, um, but yeah, it's of course it's got to be gluten free. <laughs> it's, it's I'm telling you, it's like that that pureness that you don't have to worry about you know all the extra stuff that goes in. It actually it does say gluten free on here, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it says gluten free right there. I didn't even realize it. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. I'm definitely going to try that. Thank you for that. I'm so glad we kept going so that I could learn something. <laughs> I mean, how does it taste? Does it taste? I mean, what's it taste like? It tastes really good. And again, you can make it taste however you want to taste. So if you want it to be sweet, what I've done in the past is um, put agave or maple syrup in it um, and you in the fruits. And then that's your sweetness. If you want it in a dinner way, you can season it. You can make it however you want to taste. I added it with, I had a burrito one time. Oh, I made a burrito one time and I added it with, um, had some vegetables. I added that in there um, and some mushrooms and it was good. But I see, I flavored it for it to match everything else, um, you know, in the dish. So it does whatever you want. It, it'll taste that way. So, because it doesn't come with the taste. Oh, that's awesome. Let's suck on that pot pie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's just go with it. It's a little light, but 
it's coming. The, the, the gravy is coming out of it. So you can always put it back in. Or you just yeah. So the gravy is coming out of it. I mean, if you can see it, can y'all see it? Yeah, yeah. So this is what it's going to look like when you're done on the inside. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, she looks delicious. And there you go, on a cold winter day. <laughs> Not today, because it was actually good weather today. But it's beautiful in today, different yes. parts, <laughs> yeah, in different parts. I know y'all cold. So if you are, this is so warm and hearty, and just good. Like you'll have that 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 um, gravy in there, and the turnip bottom. Turnip bottom replaces the potato, and it's it's so good. It is so good. So yeah. Well, that's, well, that's thank it. you. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing this recipe and all about you and the cookbook. Yeah, with, most with welcome. Everyone. So if anyone wants to get in touch with you or how to buy the book, how would they do that? So if you want to buy the book, again, visit Cooking Something Good. <laughs> Cooking Something Good.com. Um, K O O. Okay. I mean, C O O. Sorry. C O O K I N G. S U M P H N G O O D dot com. Um, or you can you can add me on um, or follow me on the Instagram, same name, cooking something good dot com, Facebook, like um, cooking something good dot com. Well, minus the com, you know, you know, <laughs> I, know exactly I got things, the, the oven went off, phone beeping, so yeah, but this is the book, um, as as we were talking about earlier, hardback, good quality. Pictures in there, so you you do have all that information in there. You can kind of see what it looks like. I did do mostly pictures, so um, yeah, just kind of come and join in the fun and get your your vegan your vegan game up. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh my gosh, I put something up off the floor. All right, thank you, Stephanie, so much for joining us today. I I really appreciate you. I'm glad that I got to meet you. In, in Nashville in October and I look forward to like when we're back there you being a part of the events I mean I'm just, I just yeah. gotta have to let that stay on the floor alright well I hope you have a great day I know you're an hour behind us and put that back in the oven so that your fiance can eat it <laughs> thank you you're welcome have a great bye. day bye. Yeah. bye okay everyone thank you so much for watching Virtual Veg Fest live today we are live again next week I always forget to look at like my calendar before I go live to remember who is coming on next week. So let's see, on Thursday, we've got Allison Argo, The Last Pig Film at 4 p.m. And then on the 19th, we have a talk with the UK vegan family. Yes, we are international. So they'll be on at 4 p.m. Eastern Standlight, Eastern Standard Time as well. But once again, remember to wear a mask, right? Your mask goes over your nose, under your chin. Incredibly important that you wear it that way. You don't wear it like this. You don't wear it like this. You must cover your nose because if you don't cover your nose, <laughs> it's attached to your lungs and you know, the virus can get inside. So please be careful. Please be kind to other people and have a great rest of your weekend. Tomorrow is my birthday, which I'm super excited about, even with COVID. Yay! And I get to celebrate that with some delicious vegan food and cookies and cake from local bakers here in North Carolina in the Triangle. And then please donate to Pass the Buck campaign, support our vendors on virtualventures.com, watch the Plant Based Network, and we will see you next week. Thank you!